Hey, good evening everybody, how are you? It is a beautiful evening out there and we are so glad you are joining us tonight. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Cindy Erickson and I'm the CEO of the American Red Cross of Eastern Missouri. And this is one of my favorite events. It's one time where I look so forward to seeing many friends uh, and just really uh, celebrating you all. Also, it just reminds me of the great work uh, that we're accomplishing at the American Red Cross. So it's my great joy to welcome you to the 2015 Red Cross Community Appreciation Celebration. And we are so excited uh, that you could be here and also excited to welcome Governor Nixon, who is here tonight to help honor you. Governor Nixon is a great friend of the Red Cross. His leadership after the Joplin tornado is nationally recognized. Uh, he has supported all of the Red Cross disaster relief efforts uh, throughout the state. He's been there with, on every tornado, uh, every flooding, windstorm, or, or power outage. The mayor is there, or the governor is there. So please welcome uh, Governor Nixon. Thank you, it is really true, I can say this, it's really always great to be with members of the Red Cross community, but it's especially nice to see you all with like a roof over our heads and the power on and I don't smell smoke from a... It's always nice to give the crowd the option to listen to you. The reactions are not fundamentally different, usually, but uh, appreciate it. But it is great to be with the Red Cross community, volunteers, staff, business and community leaders. I, and quite frankly, I'm going to make short comments, but this is just a tremendous organization, a tremendous volunteer organization. The people of Missouri and Illinois, they can rely, know that they can rely on the Red Cross in their times of deepest needs. Whether they're refugees of war in East Africa, earthquake survivors in Nepal, or flood victims in Texas, people around the globe also know the Red Cross means help, hope, compassion in literally every language all the way around the world. Now I want you to know that Missouri's emergency responders and I never take you for granted because we've seen the Red Cross in action all over our great state. So in addition to congratulating the outstanding award winners tonight, I want to congratulate all of you for your work to make Missouri a stronger, more resilient, and better place to live and raise a family. Earlier this week, I got to thinking about all the places in the last six years where I've met Red Cross volunteers. The first time I worked with the Red Cross as governor was six years ago, just a couple of weeks, in fact, 13 days after I was sworn into office, when an ice storm hit the boot heel. Some of you may remember that. It was really cold, first of all. We had 18,000 power poles on the ground. Some people lost power for up to two weeks. We had all sorts of issues, but Red Cross was there. Not just there, but leading. You and your volunteers worked long hours to keep shelters open to protect families. The ice storm was a huge mass care operation. The Red Cross in that one event provided more than 330,000 meals and more than 6,500 shelter nights for people in need of a nourishing meal and a warm place to stay. That was essential and compassionate care. It also highlighted a Red Cross logistical and planning strengths. Now, I also met Red Cross volunteers hard at work here in St. Louis after the Good Friday tornado in 2011 and hundreds more who rushed to Joplin the day after that devastating tornado. You know, we all got stories about Joplin, but I want to just tell one real quick one here and then I'll move on to get this over with and you all can get your awards and continue your hard work. On Saturday, May 21st, I gave the commencement address at the gym at Missouri Southern State University. You know, that's a fun occasion. You know, college graduation, your relatively new governor, a nice school, all these, you know, half of the class was first time college graduates from your family, basically. I mean, it was really a big deal. Then I went home. About 19 hours later is when the tornado hit, the next evening. 
about 541 that, that evening. So we came back. When I came back to that gym, literally 36 hours after I had been there the first time and stood at exactly the same place I had stood before, right at the end of the basketball court, there were 468 cops and 468 people who had been injured seriously or didn't have a home that were spending the night there. And oh, by the way, when I came back there and there were 468 people there, it was the exact same time which the next tornado warning came through. And all 468 people had to be evacuated out of the shelter into the basement. And we all huddled together until that siren and all the stuff was over and then came back upstairs. So it's the only time I've seen a shelter put up in just a few short hours and then needing a shelter for a shelter in the same building at the same time. All the while, with no electricity except what the generators provided, person after person after person followed the Red Cross on the backs and the chests of the volunteers and the workers from your organization. Time and time again, that Red Cross pops back in my mind from that dangerous and scary night. It was a stunning example of the speed with which the Red Cross is capable of mobilizing and why you all are the leaders and others find their strength in the field from you. I've seen it time and time and time again. The last time was just a couple of weeks ago in Mosby, Missouri, near Kansas City, where flash flooding had inundated a small town. And oh, by the way, the rain about five hours ago just did it again. Okay. Some of these folks, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a situation, but it's going to be fine. This is an organization that comforts people in their hour of need, and you have the planning and logistical experience to make sure you get them quickly when it matters most. For victims, you raise hope by meeting the needs and providing emotional support. So let me conclude what I'm saying here, just that last piece, that emotional mental health side of this is incredibly important. The logistical organizational stuff, you guys are trained up, you're volunteers, you, you put on the suits and you go do the work. I understand that. And you're the leaders in the field and many times in the faith-based and non-governmental organizations. But to finish with a little Joplin story, One of our greatest fears, once we got through the original kind of push, finding the unaccounted for, getting people in temporary housing, making sure we were having a plan to rebuild the schools, all of the things you did that first week to 10 days, inside me as governor of our state was this gut feeling that we were gonna have to save a town. If you look at Greenwood, Kansas, it was hit by a tornado one year, year and a half before that. One year after that tornado hit Greenwood, Kansas, only 21% of the people in that town were still there. It wiped out a town and 79% of the people never came back. That was our big underlying worry in Joplin because it's part of a four state economy. You've got Kansas, you've got Arkansas, you've got Oklahoma. And while to the Missouri governor, the choices of which state to live in is oh so clear <laughs> and obvious. In fact, I've got the other ones ranked, but that's just me. To families, those county lines and state lines don't mean much. They're more interested in their churches, their schools, their friends, their neighbors, their lives. So we had to do a number of things when 7,640 houses were gone, when 986 businesses were wiped out, when 11 schools were wiped out, when one of the hospitals was wiped out, to convince people that they should stay. And I just want to tell you that a lot of people did a lot of things, and, and you all were really a key part of that. And when I sat there on August 17th of that year, the first day school was starting, and sat there with C.J. Huff, the superintendent, and, and Angie Bessendorf, the deputy superintendent, literally sitting in the principal's office. And for me, from my background, sitting in the principal's office is never really a good thing. And getting the reports from each class as to how many kids were showing up for the first day of school, 98.7% of the kids 
showed up to the first day of school 87 days after that tornado, okay? That's just an unbelievable number. I, I would challenge anybody anywhere to match that for a disaster of that, that size. And everybody here and this organization and that Red Cross and your volunteers and your resources were a primary reason why, okay? I, it's, When storms make the future seem dark, when home is a place you used to think you were safe in, this organization is a beacon of light, strength, and hope. And I thank you as the Chief Executive of the Show Me State for each of your individual efforts to continue that beacon of hope. Thank you and God bless.